Hi friends, welcome to Mizora, uh, one channel where you can find all the problem solving uh, methodologies, solutions, implementation, how to use it, case studies and everything. Uh, I'm going to start one uh, series of uh, Lean Six Sigma Yellow Bed. Uh, since Six Sigma is one of the most uh, uh, prominently used methodologies to solve problems. So you will be able to get all the details of Lean Six Sigma Yellow Belt uh, along with the entire body of knowledge, the content of body of knowledge. You'd be able to learn all the tools here. In case you have any doubt, you can reach out and again uh, uh, share your uh, case studies uh, here also in the comment section and then we would be able to help you out. Right. So let's start. Uh, this is how the sessions and topics will uh, go in this uh, series. So it will have about five uh, sections starting with the fundamentals of Six Sigma and then define phase, measure, analyze, improve and control phase. This is a pretty extensive uh, uh, content for a yellow belt section. Uh, and in the green belt, you will know even more in depth uh, on each of these tools so this is only the fundamental tool so uh, today we are going to uh, start with the six sigma fundamentals uh, the six sigma foundations and principles and subsequently you will get one video each for the sections the subsections a b c d e each subsections you will get one one video follow all those videos and slowly slowly you will learn uh, these tools uh, the idea is uh, the way we share the video with you try to implement the exerciser uh, or the questions try to ask yourself those questions if you are able to answer those quest questions then great uh, uh, you know that and uh, any any other ideas you have you can share with us in the comment section right so by the end of this session today you will be able to know what is the purpose of six sigma uh, what is DMAC methodology, how Six Sigma has uh, evolved from quality and value of Six Sigma to the organization as a whole. So this is our starting today. But before getting into what exactly is Six Sigma, let's uh, uh, ask uh, ourselves, what do we understand as a process, right? We will relate it to problem solving later on. But let's understand what do we mean by process first, right? So let's let's take an example. Process is nothing but uh, uh, some sequence of. So let me write here. What do we mean by process, right? What do we mean by process? So process is nothing but a sequence of activities. Suppose A uh, or A one, then b1 c1 and d1 let's take this for the sake of example right these are the steps these are the steps within the process right now each of these steps we uh, will have small small activities right say for a11 a12 right a13 this sort of activities it will have similarly b step can have further activities b11 b12 b13 and so on right and so on now each of this uh, steps within this process this whole can be assigned to one resource or many resource means let's take it as a telecalling ex uh, uh, exercise so a1 is one of the task of the telecalling activity so a1 can be assigned to one executive b1 can be assigned to one executive or the entire set of a to d can be assigned to one executive it depends on the complexity of the job and the volume of the job right now so this is this is what is processes right broadly speaking a sequence of steps which are executed uh, either in uh, sequentially one after another or 
there can be a parallel route also right so after doing n1 you can go to b1 or you can have option to go to b a1 also right then you might go to c1 you may not have to so there are so many processes like that but there can be uh, either a yes or a no if it's a no you go one route if it's a yes it's go you go another route so that also complexity can come here right so but broadly process means sequence of steps which are executed one by one and uh, uh, can be also parallel and each of steps has activities within it right it can be different right just to understand now let's go back to our so what is why we are talking about the purpose of six sigma right now let's take a real case example suppose i hope you guys uh, like some pizzas and all right so and everyone would have uh, bought some right so broadly if you divide uh, the whole pizza uh, process uh, uh, purchase process and delivery process you can divide it into three parts order the pizza payment then deliver it in 30 minutes right so these are the broad three areas within this what are the issues you face normally right i have listed out few there can be so many issues you face right internet login payment gateway issues uh, no payment confirmation payment not successful you don't receive the otp right there's so many cases you find while it is delivered maybe it is delivered not delivered it is warm but not good the taste is not good you don't get what you have ordered right so so many issues within this right if we take another uh, uh, issue it can be time for all these steps right it can be one minute sometime so suppose you use it for the last five times you record your uh, times what how much time it took you to order a pizza sometimes it's 20 minutes because uh, your preferred shop is closed then you have to go through so many things right then you pay sometimes sometimes there is a network issue uh, it takes 20 minutes you don't get the otp it just does not get submit right then delivery is also it's not where you say that it happens in 30 minutes it is more or less 30 45 50 minutes right so so this is this is inconsistent right suppose what happens is every time you do you do it in let's say five minutes you have to order the pizza every time or max six minutes then payment it takes max 10 minutes every time it takes 10, 10 minutes but does not take more than that and you know that and does not take uh, uh, less than eight minutes also for uh, for the sake of example right and delivery never happens before 60 minutes so now you know that to order a pizza you need one and a half hours time because it has been 30 minutes in the past the one and a half hour uh, becomes a huge huge uh, 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 thing which is which the customer does not want right so so th these are the defects and variations right let's talk about a fail failure now where in case where it it has taken the payment for 20 minutes why it has taken because the otp is not received or there is some other issue if you go back to our example again what we are calling all this so this is suppose the payment otp part and this does not happen what is the outcome of it the activity is stopped activity is stopped right and because of this there is a delay so this sort of areas where the activity is not able to complete because of some issues those are called it defects and this defects delays your process or can stop your process delays your process or it stops your process right entirely can stop your process the customer goes out it doesn't come back to you right so there are two things which is very critical defects and variations these are the biggest roadblocks in terms of a process improvement or problem right so these are the biggest roadblocks roadblocks to deliver to your customer 
Now, what then what is Six Sigma? Why we talked about this? So, what Six Sigma does is it reduces your process defects and the process variations, thereby improving the process as a whole, right? If you take the textbook uh, definition, it's an application of the scientific methods to the design and operations of management systems and business processes, which enables employees to deliver the greatest value to customer and owners right what it does it reduces your process defects it reduces your process variations and improve the process right so now let's take some under try to understand some practical areas how six sigma is related to problem solving why i started with problem solving right so if you if you try to understand whenever the last time you try to solve a problem what you did exactly right what you would have done is you would have identified the problem first what is this problem right suppose suppose let's take the pizza example so suppose your uh, here the problem was that your cycle time or your turnaround time is 40 minutes right so you I, you will identify it right you will get in more detail into why it is taking 40 minutes, which area it is taking 40. So you will identify it. Then you explore information and create ideas. How to do it, what to do, all those things, right? What is happening? Then you select the best idea, build and test the idea, uh, whatever are the solutions and then evaluate the results finally. Now, while evaluating the results or throughout this three cycles, you might get into some other problems, right? So you solve this, you go in back to again solving a new problem and this cycle continues, right? So that's what exactly is Six Sigma methodology. So we call it DMAP where uh, uh, D stands for define, then M stands for measure, A stands for analyze, improve and control subsequently, right? So what we do is we first define the problem, then we measure how bad it is, then we analyze the solutions for it, we find what are the ways to solve this, then we improve it and finally we get into a control where we either hand it over or we put in practices where we control all those defects, right? Uh, these are some of the tools which is used in Six Sigma and uh, uh, throughout define measure analyze improve control you will use all these things but as a process at, as you saw in process this has to be done sequentially it is not that you start with improve first and then slowly slowly uh, get into measure this cannot happen parallelly this is is sequential steps first you have to define then measure then analyze then improve and then you get into a control t right so, and these are not new. I'll, I'll uh, we'll go to the history part of Six Sigma while we will understand how all it started, right? This is what broadly the DMAC methodology I told you, and these are the tools we would be using, right? Now, how all this started, right? So, just to understand how all this started, uh, it it is not new as I told you so from even from 1700 uh, the first uh, article was published on normal curve then Gauss used the normal curve to explore the mathematics of errors analysis of measurement probability analysis and hypothesis testing and similarly we have the 80-20 rule which is from 1896 uh, then uh, in 1924, Walter uh, uh, Shewart also introduced control charts and he showed that the common, there is a cause of variation which is special versus common causes, right? Similarly, uh, your failure mode effect analysis, the Ishikawa diagrams, cause and effect diagram, brainstorming, all these things have slowly, slowly developed in the past. But in 1986, Bill Smith, who was a senior engineer and scientist, introduced the concept of Six Sigma at Motorola. And then he also uh, 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 developed the entire Six Sigma methodology, which tool to be used, when it has to be used, why it has to be used after this, right? So the entire, so he coupled up all these hundreds of tools and find out a simpler methodology as Six Sigma, which we can use to solve our real life problems. Uh, 
then so many organizations have taken it over and uh, slowly slowly it has improved right six sigma so this is how it looks in the history in the timeline so we started broadly in 1920s and even long before that and everyone has contributed towards the uh, problem solving or quality improvement methodologies and now we are finally landing at six sigma lean six sigma uh, now even lean is uh, uh, coupled with six sigma business process reengineering all these things we are able to see now right so what what it does what six sigma does to the organization so we do projects in six sigma right and we use tools in six sigma so it has a it brings in a huge engagement for employees who are working together who are working with the different teams right uh, because it reduces the defects and the variations it increases your bottom line you'll have trained individual like you are going through this video now and obviously you will be if you will be going through the other videos get into a training sessions to understand more on this so wherever you will go that organization will have a trained individual similarly if they have to implement six sigma they have to train all their employees right it is customer driven entirely the focus is always the defects variations everything is with respect to the customer you will understand different levels of customer later when you go to green belt and black belt level for a yellow belt level let's understand customer as just someone who is paying right and then we have a data driven approach which is there is no space for assumptions here right we just talk data if the data says yes you take this route we take that route if it says no you go back again right so it's a data driven there is no space for assumptions okay so with that we have come to this a short session with starting the fundamentals of six sigma so you would by this time you would understand what is the purpose of six sigma what is dmac and how it has uh, uh, come this far six sigma till now and why organization uses it if you have any doubts any clarifications any thought which you want to share please uh, share in the comment box and we will uh, edit in the next uh, video also right uh, thanks thanks a lot uh, for your time share your questions in the comment sections and wait for the next uh, session which would be on the lean foundations and principle uh, be with us on this uh, series and thanks a lot